Hello, everybody. Welcome back. That was a pretty quick break for us, so we are excited to have our next match. And this is a match where the games are really on the line here. We have Chile versus Greece. Yeah, so for those of you who haven't refreshed the World Cup VGC website in the past five minutes, uh, <laughs> uh, Chile is currently three wins to the week, and uh, Greece only has one win. If uh, Chile wins one more game, then Greece will be knocked out of the tournament. So Greece's tournament life is on the line right now, and it should be a fun match given that it's all going to come down to how Matthias Roa and Ilias Rofugal play out this game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, either of these two teams, you know, Greece, um, sorry, yeah, Greece has finally gotten that one win. They still need several more. They need three more here, right? Um, and they really, you know, they don't want enough to get knocked out of the tournament at this stage in the game, so it's definitely tougher for them. You know, they still have, they have a lot of games left. It's really tough to be on that back foot. You know, we saw this in the last set where they're, you know, the teams can be on the back foot. You know, Panama finally got that one win, but now it's really feeling like you're crawling back to the top here. And uh, there are still quite a lot of players that haven't played their games yet, obviously, because there are still several more matches. But you know that Chile is probably, you know, if we get the win here, if Matthias gets the win in this match, then that means that the World Cup dreams are over for Greece. And that means Costa's going to have a lot more time to commentate with us. <laughs> putting him on the spot already i like that uh but let's let's go ahead and take a look at uh the players that will be featuring in this match uh this is the team overview like we mentioned uh some interesting things to call out is that uh we've seen three zashin out of four possible teams over on greece's side of the field could be an indication of what uh we should expect to see from Ilias. whereas on chile's side of the field two kyogres one calyrex Ice and one Palkia. So uh, it's some pretty standard teams, I think, from both these sides. I, I can't say I'm surprised when I see the Pokemon that Palkia or Calyrex Ice were paired with. Uh, but for today's matchup in particular, like we showcased on the screen prior to jumping in to this round, you know, Mateus is going to be running a super interesting team for Chile centered around Calyrex Ice with some really unique partners. Yeah, that Hitmon top there. We have the Nihiligo. We have the um, Lilligant, the Torkoal for that Lily Cole combo. And then we have a Rangaro. Uh, two, some Pokemon here that you don't really see. You know, a Rangaro was one of those Pokemon that uh, had a really cool ability when it was first introduced. Definitely felt a bit underutilized in the very beginning of what was that? I believe 2015 or 27. Yeah. Uh yeah. 2017 a long time it, feel, it feels like forever ago because of the <laughs> pandemic hitmontop one of those pokemon that we've seen a bunch here in the past in pokemon competitively but not so much now having that fake out is really nice uh as a different fake out user but you know this team seems like parts of it want to run really fast but then that calyrex icy uh ice rider wants to go a lot slower than the rest of the pokemon on this team yeah, and Matthias, no stranger to the competitive Pokemon stage with a top eight placement in Destafio Latam in 2020, and then placing top four at the Santiago Regionals and Chile National Championships. So uh, if we go ahead and take a look at his opponent, Ilias, however, uh, running a pretty, uh, what I would expect to see from a Xerneas team right now, uh, also no stranger to uh, competing at this level, winning a Smogon major and getting top four in the Rose Cow Tower Clash number five within the last year. And um, the Mount Moon end of the year champion, which uh, sounds like a fun title. Honestly, I would love to be the end of the year champion because then no one can take that away from you, you know? Oh, absolutely. And like you said, he's running that really uh, a team that we've seen a lot of iterations of that Xerneas Incineroar. One of the first Rillabooms we've seen all day today. The uh, Landorus Incarnate, Volcarona, and Suicune. Suicune's a Pokemon who I'm really loving uh, this at this point in the year with this format, you know, with that Tailwind and that great typing. Uh, I think that just having that kind of utility on a Pokemon like Suicune's really great. And then Volcarona is such a fun Pokemon for Xerneas because it's so strong and has moves like Rage Powder just to divert that attention away to allow that Xerneas to Geomancy. And then, of course, the double fake out on the team is really huge. Yeah, double fake out, I think, is going to be especially important in this matchup because if you look at how um, how the trick room setup would possibly go, 
for Matthias's team. What you would want to do is maybe send in a fake out user plus a Rangaroo or maybe even two trick room users like it looks like uh, Matthias has locked into for already, or considering locking into, I should say. Uh, and then having two fake out users just means that no matter what, you can block that trick room for a turn. And a lot of times it's really that one turn. That's all you need in order to get things to go in your favor. Um, if I were on Ilias' side of the field, as tempting as it is to bring the Xerneas to this matchup, I don't <laughs> think you bring it. I, or if you do bring it, you bring it towards the back of your party because it really will want to use that Geomancy, you know, get those stat boosts, go completely on the offensive. And even though a majority of the Pokemon on Matthias' side of the field are going to be hitting for special damage, the presence of that Calyrex Ice alone is enough to keep Xerneas far away from the field to start. Uh, maybe start off with a bulkier Pokemon like that Suicune if you want to try and burn through those Trick Room turns, or uh, maybe even try and uh, use Fake Out or Volcarona to slow things down. But uh, it's really going to be up to Ilias to find that time if Matthias goes for Trick Room turn one. Yeah, and like you said, that Suicune and that Landorus are the opening lead here while we have the Orangaro. Orangaroo and the uh, Calyrex Ice Rider here. So that, like you said, that Trick Room kind of lead in the beginning, that Intimidate from the Landorus is actually really nice here. Or actually, there is no Intimidate. It is the uh, Incarnate form. So it is that sheer force ability. is still able to do a lot of damage uh, by sacrificing having those secondary effects. It's a lot of damage on the special side of things too, which uh, will sort of come into play here uh, eventually, maybe not right away. I think for now, Matthias has a free turn here to go for the trick room on that Orangaroo and then simply protect the Calyrex so that next turn you can attack with a Glacial Lance, pick up the knockout on that Landorus and slowly start whittling down that Suicune. Honestly, I think the only thing I would be threatened about right now if I were Matthias would be the possibility of a Scald Burn coming off that Suicune, uh, which would certainly slow things down for that Calyrex. Yeah, Incineroar here actually switches in for that Landorus, who would be much more comfortable taking a Glacial Lance than the Pokemon on, uh, than the Landorus that was there. Another Intimidate coming out, though, here, and the high horsepower from the Calyrex oh. into that Incineroar slot, so that was a great read there, knowing that it's not going to be able to hit something like that, um, like that Landers, but a roar from the Suicune sends that Orangaroo out and brings in the Nihiligo, so no Trick Room here if that was what they were going for. No Trick Room, and that is the really neat thing about Roar, is that it forces a switch exactly one priority tier above <laughs> where Trick Room would activate, so it's always guaranteed to be faster despite it would be slower than the attacks on the opposing side of the field, but for a Pokemon like Suicune, given its natural bulk, that really isn't a problem. Honestly, the fact that the Orangaroo was switched out there works to Matthias's advantage because you really don't want to keep the Cali Rex Ice on the field after it's been intimidated by a Pokemon like Incineroar. So Matthias would have probably wanted to switch this turn anyways, and it's so much easier to switch in a Pokemon like Orangaroo for a Calyrex Ice so that you have that extra bulk and you don't have to worry as much about the damage you're taking when you come out onto the field. Yeah, Orangaroo does switch in here while the Calyrex Ice switches out. The Incineroar switches in for the Landorus. Nihiligo goes for a Protector, not wanting to take any damage, while the Suicune goes for the Scald into the Orangaroo slot, and we're going to have to see if it gets that burn here. We do get a critical hit, but still not a whole lot of damage, but no burn on the Orangaroo. And the Orangaroo is happy to take an attack like that because at the end of the day, even if it does go on the offensive, it's not going to be relying on that attack stat. Uh, the only thing that the burn would really do that would be a negative would be the damage that Orangaroo would take in between turns. Uh, but unfortunately for Matthias, you know, he's still in a position now where the Suicune could go for a second roar. Yes, the Nihiligo is out on the field, but the Nihiligo is going to struggle to deal damage against these two Pokemon and Matthias needs to find a way to get that trick room up so that the Calyrex Ice can be the damage dealer that it needs to be given this matchup. 
If Muntop switches in here, he does only get an Intimidate onto that special attacking Landers Incarnate, who then goes for the Protect. Psyshock from the Oranguru also goes into that Protected slot here, so then the Suicune goes for that Roar into actually the Oranguru slot, like you said, sorry, I thought that the angle showed hit Muntop just for a quick second. Brings that Nihiligo back out, though, so now that Nihiligo, who just took off the field, is back in play and still in a position where it's going to struggle to deal damage unfortunately matthias possibly hoping that the calyrex ice would have been the one forced out there so then with the fake out support from that hitmon on top could have gotten an attack in uh, so really just some more slow play by both these trainers slowly though Elias is the only trainer on the field who's dealing damage and again Matthias really needs to find a way to stop this slow play to start matching the little amounts of damage Elias is doing so that we can actually get this game underway a uh, great switch out here that Landorus going into the Incineroar here on Ilias' side, but a fake out here from the uh, him on top goes into the Incineroar is enough to proc its berry. That Meteor Beam from the Nihiligo, though, is going to come out and do a ton of damage once it gets powered up fully in one turn, thanks to that Power Herb that it is holding. So it depends exactly on who this targets. If it's the Incineroar, this should easily pick up the knockout here, which it is, and that is enough to knock it out, even after eating that berry, just from that one last bit of chip from that fake out on uh, the him on top and it does get that special attack beast boost which is huge yes that special attack beast boost is going to be really important for matthias given that nihiligo again does not have the best matchup typing wise against the suicune and against the landorus if Ilias's last pokemon is indeed that xerneas he will not send it out onto the field until that nihiligo has been removed just because Nihiligo has such a great matchup against it. It can outspeed and then it can use that beast boosted sludge bomb to pick up the one hit knockout prior to a Geomancy. So it's very important that Matthias keeps that Nihiligo safe while still trying to find an opportunity to get some damage down. Yeah, and the Hemon top switches again while into the Oranguru slot, which is now taking an Earth Power from the Landorus Incarnate. Does a pretty good chunk of damage here. A Scald also goes into the Oranguru slot, so neither of the Pokemon targeted that protected Nihiligo slot, which was a great play there, not having to worry about dealing with it, and now it knows it could probably get some good attacks off next turn. And all Ilias has to do is connect an attack with this Oranguru, and one of the two possible Trick Room setters will be removed. So still providing that consistent pressure, the Tailwind ensuring that both the Landorus and the Suicune can attack before that Nihiligo. Uh, just slowly playing through this game, and uh, as soon as I think Ilias is able to pick up a knockout on this Oranguru. Uh, I think we're going to see this game pick up in pace because Matthias' ability to switch is really uh, going to be decreased. Yeah, we do actually see here the Oranguru finally gets knocked out from a Scald from the Suicune, while an Earth Power from that Landorus was, did a really good chunk of damage to the Hitmontop that switched in for the Nihiligo. Matthias not, wanted, not worrying too much about even having that Beast Boost, knowing it's more important to uh, get better position, and then switches in that Calyrex Ice Rider here. So Calyrex will have one opportunity to go on the offense before uh, it will have to take damage for, you know, since it will be naturally slower on the field. Um, what I find curious about this turn is that Matthias has a very tough decision here. On the one hand, you can go for a, um, like an attack or uh, a fake out to get a flinch on the opposing side of the field. On the other, if you think Landorus is going to protect, you click faint. <laughs> to ensure that you can take a knockout of your own. And we do see that faint, faint, one of those moves that I'm absolutely loving right now in Series 10. Does break Landorus's Protect there. Calyrex goes for a Glacial Lance into the Suicune slot. This will still do a pretty decent chunk of damage here, even if the typing isn't great. But it is enough to knock the Landorus out, and it does just a little bit of damage there onto the Suicune. So getting rid of that Landorus, absolutely huge for Matthias, because we know it's not going to be able to do any more strong special type attacks, and getting that Chilling Nay boost. 
and it also makes it a little bit easier for the Nile Ego to go on the <laughs> offense if we're going to see the reveal of that Xerneas this turn. Uh, the Roar, a great play from Ilias to ensure that if there was a knockout that turn, uh, that the Chilling Nay boost would not stick also gives the opportunity to uh, really force the uh, Calyrex off the field regardless. But knowing that the last Pokemon that Ilias has brought to this game is going to be that Volcarona. Unfortunately, it's going to come down to Suicune for Alias to win this game. You know, Nihiligo should be able to connect a power gem to that Volcarona quite easily for a knockout. So if Suicune's able to deal some big damage to Nihiligo or possibly burn the him on top, I think Alias still has a shot, but uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, power jump from the Nihiligo into the Volcarona, a very easy knockout, even after that feint from him on top, just to ensure there was no protecting here, and then finally getting that beast boost again, now that its partner, uh, Calyrex, had swapped out. A Tailwind here from the Suicune, so trying to go faster than all of the Pokemon on Matthias' side. You know, he's only really got the option for Trick Room on that uh, Calyrex Ice Rider, which I don't really feel that is entirely necessary at this point. No, really all Matthias has to do is connect two attacks this turn and Suicune without access to recovery uh, will not be able to win this game for Ilias. So, you know, it, that was a very well played game by both these trainers. I think Ilias had the right idea of using that roar to deny the Trick Room setup, but uh, we saw Calyrex Ice get one opportunity to get that big damage down onto the field thanks to the Faint and Glacial Lance combination, and that was really awesome all Matthias needed to turn the scales and to uh, bring the momentum to his favor. Going into game two, I would like to see Ilias match that slow play again because I think it did serve him well. You just also have to make sure that you're targeting the right Pokemon. It's nice to get that damage down onto the Oranguru or the Hitmontop, but when those Pokemon aren't really dealing damage, uh, you're really, again, just opening up things for Nile Ego and Calyrex to succeed. Yeah, and of course, all the Pokemon here, you know, Ilias was not doing as much damage every single turn as he might have wanted to, you know, especially in that early game where everybody was switching at least one Pokemon for, I think, the first four or five turns in this yeah. game. So nobody was sticking around for too, too long. Either the switch was intentional or it wasn't with that roar, you know, that Oranguru was not able to set up that Trick Room like it may have wanted to, but it still was able to consistently position into a way that, uh, made it so Ilias had to think a little bit harder here. Um, you know, it was something that I think is going to have to be better played for them, you know, just working on who can keep that dominant position, especially knowing that there is that roar now in play and that it can really, you know, disrupt, especially if you bring in a Pokemon that's running Trick Room or something that can get some sort of boost here, or even being able to just get a roar for a Pokemon that's got a Grimne or a Beast Boost or just something that is, you know, could be problematic. So you might just have yeah. to protect yourself a little bit better. Yeah, a, a little bit better, but the benefit to that Suicune, at least, was that it wasn't dealing as much damage, and every turn that it roared was a turn that it wasn't attacking. So it's a delicate balance. You know, you want to keep that pressure on the field, but you also want to be going for those Scalds when you can to try and roll those burns, because if that Calyrex Ice had been burned, then that certainly would have opened a few more doors for Ilias in that game one. But alas, that was a past game. Uh, we're currently in the pre present and uh we have some really interesting leads coming out from both these trainers yeah i love both of these leads it's the incineroar and the suicune over on Ilias' side what we have from matthias the lilligant and the calyrex ice rider so i love the i love the fake out pressure right away i think that that's great and then i think the li lilligant means that you probably have that torque hole in the back most likely, but the Lilligant also means that you have a way to hit the Suicune for big damage that Matthias simply did not have access to before. The big question is, will Ilias immediately pivot or will he try and get some damage down onto one of these Pokemon with a Fake Out plus an attack? Maybe even a Tailwind from that Suicune, seeing how vital Tailwind was uh, when it came down to speed control in that game one. Uh, but for now, it looks like we're just getting a pivot. 
Yeah, Landorus uh, switches in for the Incineroar here. Lilligant goes for a Grass Knot, though, into the Suicune slot. Does a really good chunk of damage, over 50% to that Suicune, who then goes for the Scald into the Calyrex slot here. Definitely fishing for some sort of burn, but does not get one. The high horsepower, though, does not affect the Landorus that swapped in for the Incineroar earlier. It does not, and it's the inverse of that great prediction we had on game one by Matthias going for high horsepower into the Landorus that became the Incineroar, uh, but still a very strong turn one for Matthias, bringing Suicune down to below half of its health immediately is going to make things a lot easier for him. Uh, you know, Suicune will have less opportunities to roar, to scald, and again, like we've discussed, those moves are really going to make this game a struggle. Xerneas is here for this game, though, as the Landorus swaps out and does, of course, set that Fairy Aura for the field. And the Suicune also swaps out here. This could be something like that Incineroar, which it is, to get Fake Out Pressure on that next turn, but that means that that Roar utility is off the field and that Scald utility is also off the field, even though he was not able to get a burn on that first turn like he was fishing for. Lilligan goes for a Sleep Powder into the Incineroar slot, which means no Fake Out Pressure next turn, as that Incineroar will be taking a pretty quick cat nap here and then a glacial lance from this calyrex ice rider onto the both of the pokemon on Ilias's side of the field will do a pretty good chunk of damage onto that xerneas but and a little bit onto the incineroar both these pokemon do take that attack pretty comfortably though Without the fake out pressure, I don't think Ilias can use Geomancy this turn. He's going to be forced to switch his Pokemon around or otherwise protect the Xerneas, and that is really unfortunate. You know, Ilias did have that perfect opportunity in that last turn to pivot and get the Xerneas next to a fake out user so that Geomancy could be his way out of this game too. But Sleep Powder, when it hits its mark, it's just uh, unstoppable force just pure exhaustion in concentrated form when it hits physically it hits emotionally as well as now that Xerneas <laughs> is asleep just like its side partner Pokemon Incineroar the Nihiligo switches in here as well loves to be in front of a sleeping Xerneas this is really its comfort place here not gonna have to worry about doing uh, dealing with any damage but also able to get something like that really powerful sludge bomb here and of course that's gonna be a really big change I think for both of the Pokemon on this side for Matthias and I think that having that sleep power from Lilligan has completely changed the game in an awesome adjustment it, it has and unfortunately for Ilias as well I think normally the uh, the Incineroar will be ca would carry something like a safety goggle so that you don't have to worry about these sleep powders or rage powders otherwise disrupting your strategy but as far as we have seen that item is nowhere to be found and as a result Matthias able to connect those sleep powders put those pokemon to sleep and again bring even more of the momentum into his favor yeah hitmontop switches in here though and suicune switches in for the incineroar on the opponent's side while sludge bomb connects with the xerneas is enough for that knockout we'll get that beast boost as well xerneas was not able to do anything without its incineroar awake and without it being awake either so that lilligant really came in and did exactly what it needed to do it may not have worried too much about having that chlorophyll boost from that torkoal you know it's still faster than that xerneas was without that uh geomancy boost to that speed so having that utility for that um right there with that uh, sleep powder is absolutely huge knowing that Ilias's uh, changes and adjustments would make it uh, really useful here and the Landorus incarnate comes out in the uh, place of its knocked out partner yeah if we do see a game three I don't think Ilias will let the field get to a point where there is no tailwind active but then you have to worry about trick room so uh, Matthias uh, looks like we just see a lock-in of a forfeit instead I really love how Matthias played that game because going into team preview with that team you think okay there's the Oranguru, there's the Calyrex Ice, there definitely has to be Trick Room. Uh, but Matthias was able to play both those games, you know, certainly making attempts at it, you know, we saw in game one with Oranguru, but uh, knowing how to manage his win condition outside of having the speed control on the field, and then also bringing that Lilligant, without Torkoal even, knowing that it would be fast enough on its own to deal the damage needed to Suicune and uh, really put a lot of pressure down. So I really 
loved how that game was played. It felt like it was a very sort of deep, slow mental battle when it came to board positioning and predictions and whatnot. And uh, even though uh, Ilias lost, I think that he should be very proud of how he played that. Yeah, that does actually mean, though, here that for Chile and Greece, that does put it at four wins for Chile. So that does mean that Greece is officially out. And like I said earlier, Costa is now stuck with us a little bit more uh, in the next few weeks. So I hope he is at least excited for that. Um, you know, I did love the adjustment there. You know, that Volcarona wasn't doing a whole lot because of that Nihiligo, but that Nihiligo is still such a problem for the other Pokemon that was brought, being that Xerneas. You know, Nihiligo is a Xerneas counter. That's really what it is in this meta. You know, having that Meteor Beam is great for a lot of other Pokemon as well, but that Sludge Bomb is so strong, and if you're able to get those Beast Boosts up, it can be really detrimental to whatever your game plan is, especially if you just let it run rampant. So, you know, I love the Lilligan. It shows exactly how annoying sleep powder can be if you don't get taken if you don't take care of it early and that sleep powder into the switched in Sonora really meant that there was no option for fake out to stop another sleep powder and to allow yourself to set that geomancy up so it was a rough switch in to a sleep powder that was uh i think really detrimental to the rest of the game yeah, and it just goes to show the importance of making sure, especially when you're running a team like a Xerneas team, where there is like the, the one Pokemon that you want to get those stat boosts and really sort of drive the game for you. It's super important to have set strategies to handle uh, moves like Sleep Powder or just Sleep in general. Uh, so Safety Goggles, Lumberries, Chesto Berries, um, even though they don't give you health recovery, which is unfortunately what a lot of Incineroar also want. Um, it's, it's important to have that Pokemon that you can switch in for those circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with week three, though, of Pokemon World Cup, we have been doing five matches each day instead of four. So this is not the last match. We will be back with one more. And this one uh, is featuring our very own Jamie Boyd as one of the competitors. So it will be an interesting match. You will see me and Ben on that after our short break. So we will be right back. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> 